Disability. Written and performed by Marian Rydell. Part of the Other People's Problems Flash Fiction Collection. Amy leapt up to move the chair out of the way. She set it against the patio's fence, leaving a tiny gap so the chair back wouldn't bang against the railing. Thanks for letting me share your table. I love this bistro, but it's pretty hard to get into. Yes, it's very busy. No, I mean literally. It's inaccessible. There are level changes everywhere. I can maneuver this chair pretty well, but steps are out of the question. The young man's smile shone from his mahogany complexion. My name is Bisham. He reached out to shake Amy's hand. She took a deep breath and gave his fingers a quick squeeze. Amy, nice to meet you. Bisham ordered a coffee and gluten-free cookie. They chatted pleasantly about the good weather. The server returned quickly, bringing their orders at the same time. You live in this neighborhood? asked Bisham. He noticed Amy discreetly wiped the spoon with the hem of her skirt. Yes. She turned her cup so the handle was projecting ninety degrees to the right, carefully stirred her latte so as not to cause any foam to spill into the saucer, then set the spoon on it at a forty-five degree angle. I've only been here for a couple months, said Bisham. It's a great neighborhood. I don't drive, for obvious reasons. So it's nice that there's a market, drugstore, liquor store, all within a few block radius. Amy knew she was expected to contribute to this social interaction. That's why she'd challenged herself to share the table. A raggedy bit of skin on her left thumb was tormenting her, but she did not want to bite it off in front of this stranger. I like it here very much, she said. I've lived here for... She did some mental calculations. Five years and seven months. Bisham laughed. <laughs> well, Amy, you're very precise. What do you do for a living? Amy was concerned that he was laughing at her. She regretted her offer to allow him to join her, but it was too late to change that decision. I'm a copy editor for Harlequin Publishing. I work at home. She fiddled with the ragged cuticle under the table. Harlequin? They're famous for romance novels, right? Bisham dunked his cookie in his coffee. Amy pictured the mushy cookie crumbs that would accumulate in the bottom of Bisham's cup. She shuddered as she imagined how they would feel when the final mouthful of coffee was consumed. Harlequin publishes women's fiction in a variety of genres. Some of the categories are action and adventure romance, African-American romance, body, mind, and spirit, biographies, Christian fiction, cozy mysteries, crime thrillers, erotica, fantasy romance, gothic romance, historical romance, inspirational suspense, LGBT fiction. Oh, okay. You made your point. They publish a much wider range of uh, literature than I had thought. Of course, I do not edit African American or LGBT because I am not qualified to do so. But you are qualified to edit erotica and crime? <laughs> Bisham laughed, but he realized from his companion's facial expression that she did not understand he was joking. I mainly handle language conventions and continuity issues. Occasionally I have to research to determine whether or not the content is realistic. <laughs> Interesting. Bisham decided not to make a comment about researching erotica. Amy was not drinking her latte. She was concerned that it might cause a foam mustache. She decided to initiate a new topic of conversation. What caused you to be in that wheelchair, Bisham? She sat back and linked her hands in her lap, rubbed her other thumb against the irritating skin flap. She felt confident that his response would fill a significant amount of time. Broke my back in a skiing accident. A tree jumped out in front of me when I was traveling 80 kilometers an hour. He continued to dunk his cookie. Under the table, Amy tugged at the skin on her thumb. It seemed to have grown larger and more ragged. That's unfortunate. The loose skin wasn't quite long enough to grasp with her fingers, but her teeth could tear it off in a second. She thought she could do it quickly the next time he looked down to dunk his cookie. Yeah, I was pretty miserable at first. I was really into extreme sports. I got some counseling. That helped me to adapt to my new circumstances. 
Bisham thought that Amy's curly hair and furrowed brow were adorable. I still work out, upper body only, naturally. My apartment is specially modified, so I'm totally independent. Well, except for multi-level patios, but then the benefit of that is being asked to sit at a pretty girl's table. Amy made full eye contact for the first time. Do people often ask you to sit with them? Well, no, actually, said Bisham. This is the first time. But you said... I I was joking. Bisham dunked his cookie and tried to think of another conversation topic. When he looked up, Amy quickly withdrew her hand from her mouth and put it back below the table. Is there something wrong with your latte? No. It's just that you haven't touched it. Amy dropped her left arm to her side, picked up the cup with her right. She took a sip of latte, taking great care not to tip it too high and thus cause a mustache. When she set it down, she suddenly raised her left arm and let out a tiny shriek. Ah! What's wrong? Bisham leaned forward to see her hand. I'm bleeding. Amy appeared to be trying to hold the hand as far away from herself as possible. Bisham picked up his napkin, reached across the table, and took hold of Amy's wrist, gently drew her hand towards him. He wrapped her thumb and applied slight pressure. It's okay. I've got this. Relax. Let me help you. Hey, if you enjoyed this story, give it a like and tell your friends. If you'd like to read more, go to marianridle.com and check out the blog. Or order We Drank Wine from Amazon. Thanks to Ben Sounds for the free riff that was the opening and closing music for this piece.